Now it gives me great pleasure to invite up on stage, so we'll probably need some more lighting. Um, well, it could be Mr. Grigg, it could be Dr. Grimsdark, it could be Dr. Burke, whichever one it is, is a very funny man indeed, Leslie Phillips. And also, <laughs> and also Joan's friend from the very, very early years, Dillis Lay. time in water. Those I know. Films. I remember there was one time I, I made seven films on the trot and I went into the water every time. <laughs> it really it gets very boring. I can't swim, see, which is rather worrying. Yeah, only in the wet weather. Would you actually do that stunt yourself in Doctor Who the one we saw just now? You don't think Peter would pay for people to have stunts? <laughs> <laughs> Throw him in, he would say. <laughs> the, uh, I think the, the story that we, we would like to hear is the clip that got one of the biggest laughs was the, um, was the Miss Alcock clip. Oh. I mean, it's just still 45 years later, it's hysterical, but it's hysterical because of your delivery. But that joke almost was never there at all. Well, it's one of the few things that the film sets uh, objected to, um, as I remember. And I remember one other thing, actually, when I think it was Joan who had, had to look at, at, at one of the, the guys who took his clothes off and uh, he, he didn't fancy having his clothes taken off and eventually they got his clothes off and, and she looked down at his willy and she said, oh, such a fuss about such a little thing. <laughs> um, no, Alcock, the film censor said, I'll allow the actor who says Miss Alcock permission to do it, but he mustn't emphasize either the first or the second syllable. <laughs> well, you try it. <laughs> and the flatter I did it, the dirtier it became. <laughs> but that was quite true. Dillis, you, I was reading uh, Joan's biography, as I mentioned, and you went back an awful long way together. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Before the wonderful carry-ons came on the scene, I... Uh, I was 17, and we used to do a lot of intimate review. A lot of people will know of those. And uh, I was 17 when I did almost my first, and Joan was a few years older, and she, she, she kind of was my big sister. She looked after me. We did several reviews, and uh, we went on tour before we came into the West End, and we slept together in the same room, but not in the same <laughs> bed. And I'm not going to tell you the things she said then. They were pretty stunning. Uh, and, and we shared a dressing room, so in fact, Joan and I were kind of like sisters uh, uh, until the carry-ons happened. And in fact, um, with the carry-ons, it was Joan there again who, who uh, got me into them because, bless her, she was terribly poorly just about four or five days before carry-on cruising uh, was due to go in, into, into uh, production. And... Uh, I took over from Joan at four days' notice. It was very fast, and, uh, and that's where I met the lovely Liz Fraser, of course. Now, Joan, Joan and I never actually worked <clears throat> in, in one of those films together until we got to carry on camping. We were in Doctor, but we never met, and that happened a lot of the time. It was so fast and furious. Um, but in camping, as you saw in that very first clip, I, I played her mate, her friend, and the four of us, it was, it's a well-known fact that it was made in November out on the, uh, out in a field somewhere, so that by the end of the film, they were spraying the uh, trees green and laying turf, and the midges used to rise at five o'clock and bite us, and it was, it was deeply uncomfortable, but we all had great fun, and Joan and I used to have to have our makeup totally redone after lunch, because we laughed so much, and I suppose our most favorite uh, direction from Gerald Thomas, who was uh, the director of that film, was Think Sun, as the rain came down on us. Think Sun, what more can you do? We had so much hair lacquer on, you could have hit us with a hammer. And I just have to really say this, Joan and I remain friends right to the end. I came down and visited her in hospital when I was working at Stratford every Sunday when she didn't know it was me. And I just want to say on a personal note 
that the love and attention that Joan got in the intensive care unit just showed how much absolutely everybody adored her. And uh, I know for watching those, you could see that tremendous energy that she had. And I don't know about you, but I found my smile was to there until it hurt. Because when you watched Joan, you had to smile. And they say that the true great actor, the true comedienne, is one who does it real. And everything Joan did was real. She followed it through. She, I don't think I ever saw her caricature anything, whether she was being serious or funny. I loved her very much, and I am very proud to have been a friend of hers. <laughs>